After nearly 15 years of making short films on YouTube, I have finally made a film to reach 1 million views. When I was 12 years old, I discovered this new thing called YouTube, where anyone could upload videos to the internet. I immediately knew that this was my new life goal, and I had to make a video that would get a million views, and only then would I become a famous filmmaker. I made sketches, parodies, short films. Hi, Anna. Hey, um, do you know where it's yeah! I even made a feature film at the age of 17. It, it, it was, it was a film. But after a decade of making videos for YouTube, I was still nowhere close to reaching that 1 million view number. Till something happened that would start me down the path to a million. I made a fake movie trailer for the SpongeBob episode, Night Shift, featuring one of the scariest monsters in TV history the hash slinging slasher. This trailer was based on popular horror movie trailers at the time, except instead of an actual monster, it was my best friend Neil in a trench coat holding a spatula. <laughs> Took a few months to film and edit everything, but once it was all done and uploaded, it got over 100,000 views. I was over the moon. I, I had never gotten so many views on, on anything, so I decided to do it again. This time, we'd make a fake trailer for the SpongeBob episode, Rock Bottom, essentially recreating all the scenes in live action. This one, however, barely broke a thousand views in the first month and we never really reached anything close to the Hashling Slasher. It was here that we realized that we weren't gonna just be able to rinse and repeat and uh, do what worked in the past. We'd have to get creative and try something different. I'd always wanted to make a live action Danny Phantom film. We made a short live action recreation of Danny's accident where he gets his powers and, and then we launched a Kickstarter campaign to try and raise enough money to make an original Danny Phantom short film. Unfortunately, the video only got 30,000 views or so and we didn't reach the goal. So we weren't able to recapture the success that we had with the hash slinging slasher, but why not? What made that different than the Rock Bottom or Danny Phantom videos we made? Up until this point, I've really only talked about fan films we've made, and that's not because we didn't make original stuff. We made plenty of other stuff. A short film about a ghost trying and failing to scare someone, a fake commercial about tea, uh, even a very deep and introspective short film about a guy coping with a breakup. But the reason I haven't brought these up until now is that none of these films even broke a thousand views. Most of them still haven't. With one exception, we did make a parody video of the iPhone 11 keynote about the then unreleased iPhone 12. Uh, the joke was that it was the same exact thing as the 11, but with a different name and it was more expensive. The iPhone 12 is now water resistant. That's right, you can now take it to things like water parks, as long as you don't get in the water, sports games, as long as you don't get too sweaty, and you can even go out in the rain, as long as you leave your phone inside. But this video ended up reaching about 80,000 people before the actual iPhone 12 was released. Definitely a solid video. So what made that one work? Well, the same things that made our next two videos work. Shortly after the Apple video, we decided to try another fan trailer. This time, about Gravity Falls. Within three weeks, we shot, edited, and uploaded a fake trailer, which took place five years after the events of the Gravity Falls series. At this point, we hoped we'd get maybe tens of thousands of views, though we really only expected a few thousand. However, after a few days, I checked the YouTube Studio app on my phone, and I saw that we had gotten a few thousand views that day. And each time I refreshed that number, it was going up by the hundreds. This kept going and going and going until we reached over 400,000 views. Far and away our most successful video to that point. And just like that, our Slack Shack channel was monetized, we were earning money, even if it was only a few bucks, and we were getting comments flooding in from fans and supporters of the show, other YouTubers were reacting to our video, sketchy people were re-uploading our video. Okay, well that, one, that one's not so great, but you know, and we finally managed to beat out our first success. We knew we had to make something else and we decided to make something we had been wanting to do for a very, very long time. And that we knew we had a really big fan base. 
Avatar The Last Airbender. Specifically a short film about the origin of Toph and how she learned to earthbend. We shot it about a month after releasing the Gravity Falls trailer and planned to have it edited and uploaded a few months later. Nearly two years later, uh, mostly due to COVID being in full force and the fact that we all still had jobs and things, uh, we uploaded the film. If you'd like to see a more detailed behind the scenes look at this process, you can check it out in our making of video, which is here or below in the description somewhere. We uploaded the film and sat back and watched and watched and watched. Nothing really happened. Uh, we barely broke a thousand views on the first day and, and I started to panic. So Neil, my wife and I started joining as many Avatar fan pages on Facebook as we could and shared the film with whoever would listen. We probably joined a hundred or so pages and spent the whole day just sharing the film. We got our first signs of success when we saw an overwhelmingly positive response on Facebook, uh, as it was getting hundreds of reactions and comments per share, and we soon reached the 10,000s on YouTube. Then, finally, the YouTube algorithm picked it up. From June 1st to June 12th, it went from 30,000 to 990,000. We were all on the edge of our seats alongside the rest of the crew, the cast, friends, and family as we kept refreshing and refreshing until finally on Sunday morning at 8.25 a.m., just as I was walking out the door to church, we hit it. One million views. Texts and messages poured in and were sent out. It was the first time so many of us had been a part of a video that reached over a million people, and we couldn't be more proud of ourselves. It may have taken 14 years, but finally that young kid who wanted to get a million views on YouTube had achieved his dream. But how did he do it? What was this prepubescent boy to learn that would someday allow him to accomplish this? One of the first things that I learned is that the work doesn't end when the film is uploaded. We spent weeks after the top film was uploaded sharing and reaching out to people to get it to the place that it is right now. Sharing your film with the right people is imperative. Make sure that your title and thumbnail accurately show what your film is, then share it as a film I made. People are much more inclined to watch it if you say, look at this thing I made or, or was a part of, or I'd love to hear your thoughts or so on. People really enjoy giving their opinions on stuff. It's also important to remember that YouTube will often wait until a few thousand people have seen your video before casting its judgment on it. It looks at things like retention rate, click-through rate, comments and like ratio uh, to determine how people are responding to it. So if you think about it that way, then you really only need to figure out how to get a couple thousand people to watch it. And if it's good, YouTube should handle the rest. Another thing we learned is that you have to pick a topic that people are interested in. If you're looking at making a short film, the best ones tend to be fan films. And while that may not be the most popular idea, when you make something that already has a fan base, you will get way more eyes on it than if you made something original. That being said, it isn't just enough to make a fan film. People still crave originality. You can't just recreate something in live action and think that it's gonna go viral. Just look at our Rock Bottom or Danny Phantom videos. Good videos that I'm very proud of, but offer little more than a cool live action recreation. The best fan films are the ones that expand on the lore in a meaningful and interesting way. Find a story, character, or setting that already has a following and expand on it. This also doesn't necessarily have to be a fan film. It can be a film about any topic that you feel people are interested in. Our iPhone 12 video is a good example, but it could be about basketball or climate change, time travel, Amazon, or heck, horror itself is a topic that people are always interested in. The point is, make a film about something that people already care about. Don't make another film about a college-age guy waking up to his alarm clock and dealing with depression. And that leads me to the final thing that I've learned. And to be honest, probably the first thing I should have learned. And that is whatever you end up making, it has to be good. I've made a lot of stuff that was good and I've made a lot of stuff that was bad and a lot of stuff that was somewhere in between. I can tell you that people have always enjoyed watching the good stuff far more than the not good stuff. Now what makes a good short film is subjective, so this isn't a definitive list, but here's some of the stuff I look at when I'm watching a short film. Uh, the first, and in my opinion, the most important is the writing. The story has to be good, has to be something that's interesting, captivating, has to be a well-written film. Probably the next most important is the acting. 
Uh, then there's the production design, costumes, props, things like that, cinematography, audio, VFX, color grading, score, etc. For most of these points, the better they are, the, uh, the, the better, obviously. Uh, but so long as they are not distractingly bad, you know, you'll be okay. People will forgive mediocre cinematography if the story breaks their hearts or makes them want to dance. People won't click away from your video because the VFX isn't perfect, though they will if your Old West outlaw is wearing tennis shoes in front of the i10. A lot of these aspects rely on a big budget, and most viewers understand that you don't have a huge budget. But make sure that your story is something special and unique, and your film will be on its way to a million. For our Toph film, the main story revolved around the idea that Toph wanted to gain independence. She wanted to be on her own. She wanted to be able to do things without any help from others. And that was something very frustrating for her with her limitations, wanting to be able to do more than you're able. And that's something that resonates with a lot of viewers, including myself, and I think why a lot of people watched the film all the way through. They wanted to see how the film was gonna end. They wanted to see her grow and progress to get to the point that we recognize her in the show, where she's able to do all the amazing things that she can. So make sure that your film isn't just flashy and looks good, but it has a story that will resonate with your audience and leave an impact on them. I was definitely not a great filmmaker when I started at the age of 12, but I kept making stuff until I finally reached a point where the films I made were decent. And as I learned more and more, the projects I published got a better and better reception. And if you keep making films with these things in mind, then there's no way you won't someday get a million views yourself. Just make a good film about something that people care about and share it with those people. At least that's what worked for me.